Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Gregory Wilpert, joining you from Quito, Ecuador. After months of vague proposals, President Donald Trump finally presented a more detailed tax reform plan on Wednesday. The plan covers all aspects of existing U.S. tax law, such as income tax, business tax, deductions, the estate tax, among many other elements. One area that most people probably do not pay too much attention to is the corporate tax aspect. It's complicated and affects people's lives only indirectly. Joining me from Sag Harbor, New York, to analyze Trump's corporate tax reform is James S. Henry. He is an investigative economist and lawyer, global justice fellow at the Yale University, and senior advisor at the Tax Justice Network. Thanks for being here, James. Good to be with you. So there are many aspects we can talk about, uh, including about uh, Trump's uh, corporate tax overhaul, such as the reduction of the corporate tax rate, the elimination of deductions, the system of how taxes are assessed, et cetera. Let's take these, uh, some of these one by one. So first, he is proposing to reduce the corporate tax rate from 35 to 20 percent, with the argument being that the current 35 percent rate is not competitive when compared to other countries around the world. What are your thoughts on this aspect of uh, Trump's corporate tax reform? Well, I think that's just one of the many lies that he's uh, put out here. It's just completely bogus. Uh, this Goldman tax plan, it should really be called because it's so beneficial to Wall Street firms like Goldman. Um, in fact, the United States uh, tax system, uh, corporate tax system is, you know, no one uh, <laughs> uh, really pays 35 percent unless they're completely uh, brain dead. I mean, most U.S. multinationals, for example, companies like Apple and Google and Microsoft, uh, you know, have been able to uh, avoid paying more than five to ten percent. So the average effective rate for all U.S. businesses is about twelve percent, which is well within the range of being competitive. Uh, you know, these are the best companies in the world. There's no evidence that U.S. multinationals are or businesses in general are. Uh, suffering from having too high a tax rate. In fact, you know, this measure by Trump would upset about 10 years of progress that the world community has made toward getting rid of the sort of race to the bottom that we've had. You know, the U.S. cuts its effective rate to, uh, or its nominal rate to 20 percent. That's just going to set off a lot of, uh, you know, sort of reciprocal reductions like we've seen since the 1970s and 80s by other countries. So we have this kind of race to the bottom. And the territorial tax, I mean, this is the most important aspect of this proposal that he's proposing. The U.S. now has a worldwide corporate income tax. Uh, if, under this proposal, if you know a company like Apple shifts all of its income to an offshore haven uh, or by doing, you know, transferring intellectual property uh, to Bermuda or Ireland, even more than it's been doing already, uh, you know, be able to pay itself royalties tax-free. This is like a, a relief plan for tax havens. In the last decade, we've had, you know, the OECD, the G20, uh, the United Nations all working hard on reforming the international corporate tax system so that it's more fair uh, to developing countries. And we actually have uh, companies like these giants actually paying a fair share of taxes. So this plan with, you know, if it if it were adopted, I don't think it will be, uh, would undermine all of that progress. Why do you think, uh, first of all, it won't be adopted? I mean, uh, the Republicans seem to be very in favor of this, uh, and they have uh, pretty solid majorities. What's standing in the way? Well, there's actually interesting splits developing within the Republican Party. You know, Republicans used to care about deficits. One of the features of this plan is it relies on voodoo, expect, voodoo economics. I mean, it's just making massive tax cuts without having uh, any sources of uh, revenue to make up for them is going to blow a hole in the, in the U.S. deficit. It's also going to hurt the trade deficit because this will strengthen the dollar, make U.S. goods more uh, expensive. And, you know, so th those two deficits are going to blow up by, you know, <laughs> uh, trillions of dollars here. I think that this is going to be upsetting to some of these Republicans when they come to their senses. I think they were basically reacting to the fact that Trump has not done anything uh, so far, hasn't gotten a single thing of any, any, any of his promises through Congress. And so, you know, there's a temporary kind of uh, uh, <laughs> willingness to overlook these big differences of opinion. But once they get down to negotiating the fine details, 
I can guarantee you that some of the deficit hawks uh, will come out of the woodwork in the Republican Party. Well, one of the things that uh, the the tax plan is supposed to do, according to um, at least some of the initial reports, is you know, for one thing, eliminate deductions in order to compensate for the lower tax rate, and the other thing is that uh, foreign companies should be taxed more. It seems. Uh, in order to compensate for uh, the loss of revenue from uh, not taxing domestic companies' profits that they make abroad. What do you think about this idea of, of you know, taxing foreign companies uh, versus, uh, and, and instead of uh, taxing domestic companies when they make profits abroad? Well, we already do tax uh, foreign companies. We can't discriminate against them. That's a violation of the WTO. Uh, we wouldn't want U.S. companies to be paying uh, artificially higher tax rates when they go to compete around the world. Uh, you know, I think that the, the basic uh, problem with this plan is it really doesn't reflect anything but self-interest on the part of the Republican, uh, you know, the elite uh, in the uh, sort of the Wall Street elite. This plan was designed and written by uh, Gary Cohn, the former president of uh, Goldman Sachs. Goldman is a huge equity investor, private equity uh, firms uh, now control um, a great deal of the stock market. Uh, you know, this is obviously going to help. Uh, there's also features in this that are going to help so-called pass-through investors, uh, people like Donald Trump himself, but also the partners at Goldman Sachs are going to be taxed at a 25% maximum rate on their income uh, for some technical reasons. But, you know, basically this corporate uh, tax plan which I'm focusing on here just, you know, is not going to create jobs. We tried this kind of repatriation that they're talking about. You know, there's $2 trillion sitting offshore, uh, but uh, a lot of that money uh, under this plan would come back entirely tax-free, even though a lot of it derived from these bogus uh, transfers of intellectual property, people like uh, companies like Apple transferring intellectual property to uh, low tax havens and then paying themselves royalties tax free. So, you know, now he's going to give them a tax break on uh, all that uh, offshore uh, profit, uh, pseudo profit that's going to come back, you know, without any conditions. President Bush tried this plan uh, of repatriating corporate profits from offshore back in 2004, created no jobs. Most of the money went into shareholder buybacks which are just, you know, blowing up wealth inequality and helping uh, senior management at these companies. But there were no conditions uh, on the repatriation, insisting that companies spend money on investment here. Uh, so this is just a giveaway plan. Well, actually, that gets me to one of the next issues I want to touch on. Well, what is the alternative? I mean, if we recognize that there's a problem with the holding of, uh, of foreign uh, profits that companies make abroad, how do we get that back? And you suggested something about uh, introducing some kind of conditions. What, what would be the alternative? Well, there's work underway now, and I think the key thing is to do uh, a tax reform at a multilateral level. What we need is really agreement on a fair international minimum tax for big companies like Google and Microsoft to pay. And that's something we can only work out with our partners. But right now, there's a system where you're basically allowing companies to transfer artificial profits to you know, separate entities in places like Mauritius or the Cayman Islands uh, and then treat them as real companies, even though they're not doing any business there and avoid tax. There's about $300 billion a year of uncollected uh, taxes based on that kind of profit shifting. And that's exactly the problem that the G20 and the, B, uh, the OECD has been working hard to correct with their base erosion profit shifting project uh, over the last five years. That's just coming to fruition. The United States should sign up for it and collaborate with uh, other wealthy countries to devise, to devise a uh, an alternative system which would look at what we call, you know, within the United States, we have 50 states that have their own state income taxes. Um, and they've worked out a system to allocate corporate taxes on a fair basis based on real activities going on in those states, sales, assets, employment. Uh, that's the kind of system, that formulary apportionment system that we actually need on a global basis to get this uh, international tax system fixed. 
But the Trump system is going to declare war on every other country uh, <laughs> that we're competing with here in terms of taxation, and it's just going to be a, another race to the bottom. Okay, well, we'll certainly pay attention uh, to how this uh, race to the, to the bottom <laughs> develops if it continues in that direction, and uh, we'll probably come back to you at that point. So well, I was speaking to uh, uh, investigative journalist and tax lawyer James S. Henry. Thanks again, James, for having joined us. Great. Have fun in Ecuador. <laughs> and thank you for watching The Real News Network.